I wouldn't really grasp the idea that this was a bad thing or what was happening was wrong. When Isabella Mills was two years old, the Queensland government sent her to live with a pedophile. Her foster father, the man she knew as dad, abused her for years. He would get me to do all sorts of different activities, move in different positions and different places, and would just take pictures of my body as he pleased. When she reached her teens, Isabella was sent to live with another carer. But rather than save her from the abuse, it escalated. He raped her regularly, in the shower and at his gym. He would sit in his office and then he would start playing porn really loudly so I could hear all the moaning and whatnot. And then that would be my cue to come into the office. She alerted the Department of Children and Youth Justice to non-sexual abuse but its investigation was abandoned. Isabella was never told why. At 16, she went to the police, and both men were charged with rape and child sex offences. The men themselves failed me. But I also think that child safety is also at fault as well. The ABC sought a response from the department involved in Isabella's case, but only received this broad statement in reply. The Queensland government has zero tolerance for child sexual abuse and our staff are trained to identify and deal with it. Their staff is definitely not trained to identify sexual abuse. You know, I'd already overcome so much prior to coming into foster care, and yet the challenges kept just getting worse. Amy O'Brien moved 46 times in the five years she was in the Queensland government's care, staying with foster carers and at group homes, or when all else fell through, in a motel room with a government worker. During one of those stays, a female worker took her shopping. It wasn't just, you know, an outfit. It was like 10 outfits. This isn't something I sort of experienced before. Like, it was like, if you like it, grab it. But yeah, it just, it didn't feel right. Back at the hotel, the worker suggested a massage. It started off like just a normal massage, like my shoulders, but it just went like further down. I don't even want to say it. <laughs> the department's response to give the worker more training. We treat very seriously any allegations of sexual abuse made by a young person about a carer, and we respond to these allegations jointly with police. I spoke to police last week and no report was ever made to them. So that's my response to that. <laughs> the devastating failures of the child protection system aren't confined to one city or one state. The hundreds of people who came forward as part of a nationwide ABC investigation represent every state and territory. Shockingly, 200 of those most concerned about the failings are current and former workers. I just felt I had to say something. I had to stand up. I'd seen too much. Until recently, Megan Beveridge worked in group homes in South Australia. She remembers three young siblings. The youngest, a little girl, was exhibiting sexualised behaviour. I was told by a senior that it's the culture and it always happens in Aboriginal households. A colleague later found the girl being raped by her brother. I didn't even see the young girl get counselling. The racism that I have never encountered anywhere before at that level is um, rife in the department. I have heard Indigenous people referred to as monkeys by staff members. 
Beverly Bell left her job as a caseworker in 2018. She says staff at Tasmania's Department of Communities frequently engaged in an illegal practice, presenting courts with documents copy-pasted from the files of other children. Well, it's the same as if you got up in the witness box and lied in court. The department says court documents relate to the specific children, but some information pertaining to a sibling group may be replicated. I think the, the public image is more important to this department than it is to um, caring for children. Cora Ingram worked for the New South Wales Department of Communities and Justice until 2018. She was a caseworker, a manager and a policy advisor to a former minister. She says the statistics around child protection cases are fudged. It's all about being able to say to the Ombudsman and the Children's Guardian that look at all these figures, look at all these reports that have been you know, um, investigated, when a lot of them haven't been investigated. They've just had a, a case file opened and that's about it. The department said they're transparent, condemned racism and focused on keeping children safe. Some reported a drop in the number of young people in care. Recent improvements include legal changes to protect children, more training, better funding and efforts to place Aboriginal children with kin. We have to be held accountable. We are essentially becoming their parents. Are Australia's children safe in the department's care? No. Perhaps a Royal Commission would be the best answer. But it's got to have some teeth and it's got to have the proper questions asked.